Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 72 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jadicat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. First thing you're going to notice, I have a lot more trees set up than I did before. There's some cherry tree, there's a lemon tree, I've got a orange tree that's also growing me some cocoa, papaya, lime, all kinds of good fruit trees set up. I've been working on the McOries quest and I have it complete. If I take a look in my quest book, in bragging rights, all quests completed, the final bit of McOries, and just so you can understand the magnitude of what you're getting yourself into with this quest, there's a lot. There is a lot of a lot. I'm going to claim my reward, open up my epic reward bag. Not even a legendary reward bag for that, just epic. And I get a 64k storage cell, which currently has nothing in it. Awesome. Here's the veggie patch. This was almost every veggie in... Well, every vegetable and every fruit, basically every crop that's in Pam's Harvest Craft, all planted in one little area. There's only one of each of them, and the fact that it takes up, uh, let's see, 33 spaces, plus a bit extra for pumpkin. And there's more than that, actually. Like, there's carrots and potatoes that also got used, lots of sugar, uh, tons of these white button mushrooms, yeah. A whole bunch goes into making the McOri's quest happen. So much, in fact, that I couldn't even fit it all into one chest. I had to use another one. About a chest and a diamond chest and a half worth of individual items. And some of them along the way got recrafted into even better items. So yeah, we're going to toss that culinary master in there and pretend that this never happened. It was... This took me actually a couple of hours on and off, and I had to expand my applied energistics storage system just to make it happen. Which, I've decided that the best method of expanding my storage system at this point is just to produce a drive full of 64k storage cells, because I have that those kind of resources. Uh, it is a cop-out, and it's cheating, and it is, you know... It destroys the entire concept of a storage system by simply digitizing everything. But I'm also almost at the end, and I just don't care. It's it, it was actually fun to be at a point where I could just say, storage? Who needs storage? Speaking of storage, though, I did run into a problem with my mana beans. So I set up an individual deep storage unit for every type of mana bean. Yeah... That's a lot of potential mana beans. That is a lot of potential essentia. And these guys now get to continue working at full speed and putting the items into the interface. The reason this happened was this interface actually ended up back stuff. And it was a bit of an issue because it started causing a ton of lag from that one little block. It actually, if I type COFHTPS, it dropped that... Um, 26 millisecond overworld uh, it increased that to something like oh I don't remember it was down to like two and a half ticks per second or something like that pretty fun now also the pearl oyster well that sand going into that one oyster and then getting pumped out by whoops I'm missing I'm not gonna be able to target it from here am I getting pumped out by that one uh, item duct underneath it is doing a pretty good job of supplying me with a whole bunch of different pearls of different colors. So that's pretty nice, actually. It won't pull the sand out automatically, but it will pull out the pearls once they are done being created. So what else have I set up? Well, I got myself the crucible furnace set up. Whoops. Up here. Before I go up there, I'm going to turn off my sigil of magnetism. Oh, that's the other thing I did. I removed the sigil of the whirlwind from my leggings and the sigil of magnetism from my chest plate and just put uh, the sigil of mag magnetism into my hotbar or in my inventory where I'll be able to easily activate it and deactivate it. That way, I don't have to worry about coming near this thing because otherwise, if I come near it with this on every time something pops up, it gets sucked into my inventory instead of the vacuum hopper. Like that. It's a bit of a problem. However, not a problem when I have my sigil easily deactivate, uh, easily deactivatable like this. 
There we go. Uh, I put another crucible furnace over here on my liquefacted coal line. And I, well, I was tossing raw fish into there, but they all got eaten. No, they all got used already. But I'll grab two more just to show you why I was doing this. So if I put these regular Minecraft raw fish into here, they will melt down into 100 millibuckets of fish oil each with no items. So I just have a fluid import bus on the side of this thing, sucking the fish oil out of it and putting it into my network at large. If I go over here, you can see that I created myself, well, I'm going to have just over two buckets worth of fish oil at this point, and uh, it won't actually let me use that from there. But if I look up, I needed some polished sticks, I believe it was, to make the wooden fishing rods, and the polished sticks require... Wow, actually, each polished stick requires five buckets worth of fish oil. All right, so I'm going to need to get my auto fisher set back up before I can make uh, the Mariculture auto fisher. I think it was just called the fisher. Yeah. So I'm going to get this guy set up, and I'm going to let him run for a little bit and produce some fish for me. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm honestly going to keep cheating with Tesseracts. I know that some of you feel that I do too much with them. That's okay. You can continue feeling that, and I will continue abusing the heck out of them. So this is going to go on my default. It's going to... Whoops. Nope. Default. It's going to receive energy. It is going to send items. And I don't think it needs to send fluids, but it will anyway. And there we go. It will... Hmm. Can it not work from there? Interesting. That's okay. I can always move it over a bit. It might not be happy that there is a oyster underneath it there. So if I put it there, it should work a little better, I think. Yes, now it's working just... F Maybe it's not working just fine. What seems to be the problem there, Fisher? Let me look into this. I'll be right back. Here's the issue. The Fisher actually needs a 3x3x1 three by three by pool of water. So it needs to be these nine uh, uninterrupted, uninterrupted blocks of water. And this item duct was in the way, stopping it from being able to do its, par uh, do its thing properly. So now that it's set up above a 3x3x1 three by three by pool of water, it is working away happily and generating for me more raw fish, as I now have 17 instead of 16. However, as these only produce 100 millibuckets apiece, it's still going to be rather slow if I rely on just those. Thankfully, I did do a little bit of fishing with my Mariculture uh, titanium rod, and I believe this... not the raw bass. Didn't I have a catfish somewhere? Hang on. I need to look up fish, and I need to find where all of my goodies have gone, because they seem to have disappeared on me. Oh, before I get into that, though, let's talk about McOris. There were two items that were slightly more difficult than others to get my hands on. That was the raw mutton for, not stock or meaty stew, for the honey lemon lamb. You have to kill sheep to get raw mutton. Normally, in vanilla, sheep do not give any meat, and there's really no reason to kill them if you're uh, going to be shearing them for their wool. So... I did not even think that I would need to do that until I discovered that this was there. But if I click on it or tap R on it, there's no way to know, like, where it comes from. Also, if I grab out some water, you need to put some fresh water into this presser, which will slowly start processing. And you're going to need this to make the lemon-lime soda. You only need the one soda, but putting the fresh water in there creates your bubbly water which is required to make any of the sodas. Lemon Lime is the only one that's in the quest. So, those are the two items that you could not just look through any eye and find exactly where they come from. Just a heads up in case you end up needing to go through McOris. Basically, everything here you can find out just by looking up the recipe in any eye, and if you don't have the plants involved, the fruits or veggies that you need, you can look up their seeds or their saplings or whatever almost everything is really easy to sort out yourself it's just the soda and the raw mutton that threw me for a bit of a loop okay ah here we go i knew i had some more fish somewhere raw rainbow trout raw catfish squid yeah i did a little bit of fishing not a ton 
I don't know why I have an Archmage's Blood Orb just kind of hanging out there, but he can keep hanging out there. So if I use this Cod in a Crucible Furnace, that's worth 20, uh, like two and a half buckets of fish oil. The Damselfish, I don't think I can actually toss into a... So I believe if I take that Damselfish and I toss it on the ground and I give it a moment, it will turn into a raw Damselfish. Once I pick it back up, now I have a raw damselfish. So if you ever want to kill your fish so that you can cook them, toss them on the ground. And as you can see, all of the mariculture fish give a lot more fish oil than the vanilla fish. That even has a chance of some pink dye. Uh, and then the catfish was the one that I was really excited about. Is this guy... Oh, well, he gives less than two buckets. I thought he gave three and a half for some reason. Uh, the squid... Whoops. Hang on. Wrong button. There we go. The squid also can be used in the crucible furnace. Or no, it can't. I thought it could. Hmm. That's odd. Anyway, moving moving right along. Was it the bass that gave a ton of fish oil? Yes, four buckets worth of fish oil out of one raw bass. So I'm going to go get these fish melted down into fish oil for me. And when I have myself a whole bunch of fish oil and I'm ready to make some polished uh, sticks, I will be right back. Hey folks, I figured as long as I'm doing a whole bunch of work on my crucible furnaces and I need them to go a little faster, why not upgrade them? So you can make your hyperkinetic upgrades. Uh, I'm going to need some ice. That's okay. Hang on. So step one of all of this is I'm going to need to get glacial precipitators set back up. I don't know why I don't have them right now, but I don't. So I'm going to grab all three of them and let me go get those set up producing me a Java barrel worth of ice. Be right back. All right, got some ice generation going on here. Have glacial precipitators being supplied water in the bottom, exporting ice out the top into a better barrel, which is going to have a storage bus living on top of it. And to supply power, I just have a Tesseract in the back because I couldn't be bothered to run redstone energy conduits everywhere. Just wasn't going to happen. So, now I've got my ice going on. Now I can show you those hyperkinetic upgrades. So, I taught my system how to make each one of these hyperkinetic upgrades. And they are fairly simple. First one, just some iron and some sugar. The upgrade requires the basic and add some aluminum and more sugar. The upgrade from that requires titanium, more aluminum, and some ice. And the ultimate hyperkinetic upgrade requires titanium powered rail, which is a uh, default vanilla Minecraft recipe of stick, gold, and redstone, as well as sheet of aluminum. And I'm going to toss in some of these aluminum sheets, and I'm going to tell it to make me three of these while I go back to showing you how these things function. Hmm. Did you get stuck on something? I'm out of titanium. What? That's not right. Shouldn't you still be producing more titanium for me up here, system? Oh, you know what? It's producing titanium blocks and it doesn't know how to unpack the blocks, does it? Yep, that's the problem. That's an easy fix. One of those in-process bugs that... Uh... Nope, nope, nope. Not like that. Like that. There. Now it knows how to make titanium for me. Yep. And it's already done. Fantastic. I love this thing. So to make those sheets of aluminum, there might be a better way. The only way that I know how is you need to make a blacksmith's anvil, which if I look that up, is made with the brick construction blocks that you've seen before, as well as some burnt brick and nether brick. And you can make the blacksmith's hammer, which is made with similar materials, and you need to put a block of aluminum on top of it and then left click 50-ish times to create the aluminum sheets. I don't know if there's a way to automate this. I'm not very good with the Mariculture. I plan on doing more with it in a future series. But for now, since I'm only making a few of these hyperkinetic upgrades and every time you do this, you get eight aluminum, aluminum sheets or aluminium sheets if we're being... Uh, properly English about it, I'm not too concerned. That's going to provide me plenty. For example, if I look up those sheets now, uh, I have produced 32 and used 6. Yeah, 
I'm in a pretty good place. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to set that blacksmith's hammer right on top of the anvil for now, where I can pick it up if I want to use it in the future. And I'm going to grab myself those kinetic upgrades, all three that I've made. And I'm going to put them into my crucible furnace that's doing my fish cooking for me so that you can see the difference very easily illustrated between cooking up some raw fish with and without. Because I think that this will be a good demonstration on why it's worth even creating these things in the first place. Put the kinetic upgrades in there. Uh, the heating upgrades I'm just going to toss back in my system. So this is, whoops, this is two of the raw fish without the kinetic upgrades. You can see it's cooking. Progress starts. It's pretty slow. This isn't going anywhere quickly. But once I put all three uh, ultimate kinetic upgrades in there, yeah, now, well, as they say, now you're cooking with gas. Yeah. Things are going quickly, which is awesome because that's really what I wanted out of this better speed. So now I should have plenty of fish oil. I'm going to have to go downstairs to check it, and I'm also going to need to get myself another vat. I'm not going to worry about automating the fish oil and, and the polished stick creation, because honestly, I only really need the four of them right now, and I'm not going to do a whole lot more with it. So I'm just going to take that upstairs, and I'm going to grab myself... Let's see, do I have enough fish oil? Yay. Uh, no, actually, I'm short a little bit, but that's okay. I can make up the difference with raw fish because I have um, plenty to do so. And get that bone put back in there. What else do I need? I need myself a fluid export bus. Anytime now. There you go. System is taking its sweet time with things for reasons that I cannot even begin to explain. Now, am I lucky enough to be able to get a barrel of fish oil? I mean a bucket of fish oil. No. However, if I remember correctly, wait a second, was I? Yes, good. This guy is actually set up to produce lava buckets for me with a really clever setup that someone commented on, whose name I forget at the moment. I will include an annotation later to show you who it was. I have an interface facing into it with a one empty bucket becomes one lava bucket, which places the empty bucket in here. As long as I leave this set to lava, it will then export to that, which I can pipe out with this basic import bus. So now my system automatically knows how to make lava buckets without me needing to set up a complicated right-clicking contraption from a really silly kind of, um, what was it that I was using? Autonomous activators? Yeah. Anyway, rather than futz around with trying to make everything else work, I'm just going to grab the Mariculture, which, huh, this can't fill it. Hmm, that could be an issue. Hang on, let me see if any of my options can contain it. Can it put it into the drum for me? Do you not know how to fill things into... Well, I'm going to need to sort this out, but I think I have an uh, idea on how to do that. What I'm going to do is actually pull this fluid import bus off for just a moment, which I'm going to need to smack it with my pickaxe to do. And I'm going to replace it with a fluid duct. And that fluid duct is going to connect straight into that one of those uh, barrels for me. And to do that, I'm going to put the, well, the drum, not a barrel, a drum. Yeah. Stick myself in pneumatic server one there. Tell you to output and put the drum there. And now I'm going to temporarily activate my signal of magnetism to make that fluid import bus stop bouncing everywhere. Now I'm just going to toss my raw fish in there, and it should only take a second. There we go. It's all I needed. Um, hmm, wait, I put in too much. Stop. Right, so now I'm going to put that drum back on there and let those fill up and empty out the fluid duct. There we go. So the reason I did that is now I have a container that has any of the proper fluid in it. I can use that to set the target output. If I come... Well, you know what? We can actually build it right off of here. If I put my fluid export bus and my vat down, set the vat there, I can tell you to not connect, put the fluid uh, export bus on there, and set the fluid export bus 
to do fish oil using this fish oil drum. And now it's filling up with fish oil. Not very quickly because it's set low, but if I turn it up higher, it'll go quite a bit faster. There we go. I'm actually probably not going to want to do a millibucket a tick. I'll probably want to stick that to 250. Be a little bit safer so I don't accidentally waste things that way. And now I toss those four in there, and I just wait for the particles to stop. And I'll be back with my polish sticks in just a moment. One little tip on producing fish oil, in case you were like me and forgot that you needed six polished sticks instead of just the four. When you're in the crucible furnace and you mouse over anything, it tells you how the melting point and how much you get out of it. All right, we are winding down at, on fishing at this point. I have one of my wooden fishing rods completed. However, I would be remiss as long as we're talking about automated fishing if I did not talk about the blood magic integration. If I take a titanium fishing rod and toss it into an activated ritual of binding, I will get exactly what you would expect out of it. Such a cool ritual. Whoops. There it is. The bound fishing rod. Now, you're not going to want to point this straight into the air and right-click it like you would most bound tools, or you will crash. You're going to need to get some of the proper uh, bait for it first which in this case is either blood shards or rotten flesh. So I'm going to grab myself whoops, a few of these blood shards and a whole stack of rotten flesh. Or, oh, you know what? I'm feeding all of my rotten flesh to my dirt production system. I should probably stop that if I want to use any of it. In any case, this will do for now. Okay, so if you just try to right-click it like this, you will crash. It's not supposed to work deactivated. This is me being a derp. Uh, the crash is not, you know, perfect. It's not a great thing, but you need to make sure it's all activated and nice and bright, glowy red and yellow like this. I think activating it and right clicking just got me a lightning bolt. That was kind of funny. Anyway, this is a fast way to get bunches of fish because you can literally hold right click and burn through a bunch of uh, blood shards all at once, and look at all of those fish all over the place. You also get some interesting others. For example, I pulled an empty core out, I got myself a music disc. Let's toss that music disc into the system. There's just a bunch of stuff that flew all over. Got a few bottles of enchanting. And it looks like all of the fish that it... Oh no, even then, not all of the fish it pulled out are raw, so yeah. You're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of room in your inventory if you decide to use this option. And you will get plenty of fish and other goodies if you go with the bound fishing rod route. Just make sure that you have it active when you try to fish with it or you will crash. That might only happen if you're on a server. I'm not certain. The Mariculture dev does know about this and is likely to find some way to make sure that it doesn't crash in the future. In any case, there's my two wooden fishing rods. And now I have my auto fisher that I can... Oh, it's not done like that, apparently. There we go. Now I can make my automatic fisher. But to do that, I'm going to need some sort of raw fish. Here, we can toss the stingray on the ground. That will kill it. And now I have a raw, raw stingray. And it can't be a stingray. Of course it can't be a stingray. Uh, I got a minnow out of fishing around with my bound fishing rod. I guess it was a good thing that I did that after all. Where was that minnow? Here you are. One other cool thing. If you mouse over the minnow and you hold six, you can see... Well, actually, I showed that off, didn't I? Yeah, that shows off all of the fish breeding stats for it. All right, raw minnow. Oh. I am a serious derp today. Sorry about that. So yeah, the raw stingray would have worked just fine. i just, you know, fail. All right, moving on. Next on that quest list for the biologist, which is the only quest that I have available to complete anymore, I need to make an incubator base, an incubator top, and some fish meal. Let's look up what fish meal requires. Raw fish, raw any fish alone in a crafting grid will get you fish meal. So, I need 64 of it, I believe it said. Let's grab out all of my raw fish and convert it all into fish meal. Oops, I don't want the perch. 
That's not a raw fish. There we go. See how much I need extra other than this. Shouldn't be much. Or maybe I do. That's okay. I'm sure I have plenty of raw fish in my system waiting for me from that auto fisher that has been running. If I look up fish, I have 40. So that's more than enough. Put the fish there. Right click or left click gets you one at a time. There we go. There's my 64 fish meal. Let's go get the incubator made. Incubator. So the incubator base, that's needs a little bit. Uh, okay. So I'm actually going to need some interesting stuff for that. I know I can make the heating component. Uh, here, create me one of those. I don't believe I have any light blue dye. I do not. So, let's create some light blue dye and use that to create some light blue stained clay. And also, we're going to need a copper battery, which is just copper, iron, and redstone. We'll make one of those so that I can make the incubator base. There we go. And I believe I also need the incubator top. I did. Fantastic. Which is the same thing, but with white stained clay, brown dye, and, well, um, a bit of a, a raw fish. So, more raw fish. Blast. Uh, rainbow trout. You are now a raw rainbow trout. Simple as that. And white stained clay. Bone meal and hardened clay. There we go. Fantastic. What's next on the list for the biologist? Now, I need to consume 1,000 peat and 1,000 mycelium. So... Peat is an interesting one. To make peat, you would normally need to create, oh, uh, is it the peat block? No, it is bog earth. Yes, you would normally need to create this bog earth and set it down in the world with some water so that it could grow into, um, you know, I don't even remember the name of the block. Uh, let me look for it here real quick. Oh, it would just grow into finished bog earth, I guess. I don't remember the details. It's been a long time since I've made peat with forestry. In any case, you craft yourself bog earth using dirt, sand, and water, and you place it down into the world. The water cans give you more of it because you're consuming the can as opposed to the bucket where you get your bucket back. You can also use water capsules, which are effectively free if you're making a bunch of bees. Or you can put it all into a carpenter and, and use a bit of mulch, which is created by, well, I guess you can use bark from extra trees. But mulch is normally created by squeezing your nuts and your fruits. However, you can also create peat in a sludge boiler, uh, which it's not showing here. In any case, I've had my sludge boiler running for a long time eating up all of the sludge that comes in from my harvesters. If I take a look at peat, I have over 5,000 of the stuff. You can also get mycelium out of your sludge boiler. So I really hope you guys had your sludge boiler set up early on because I'm already done with these quests and I haven't even started them yet. Let's put mycelium. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the mycelium manually because I don't want to waste the resources. Mycelium. And I'm going to need about 10 stacks of the stuff. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, a little bit more than 15. 15 stacks of the stuff. Right. I forgot that I left my drones set there to... Eh, we'll just get rid of them. It's not like I don't have a ton of extra drones. Stop that. I ended up wasting a bunch of mycelium anyway. Oh well. So now I'll just set up peat the same way, and I'll be all set. Fantastic. Now, one thing that I could have done a long time ago and never ended up doing, if I go into editing uh, this servo, uh, let's see, golden back holding, I'm going to need to install a servo there. This is far too late to be doing this at this point, but the option's there. You want to leave it on enabled high, and you want to blacklist cobblestone, and then you want to grab a bunch of cobblestone. 
you could fill every single slot in here except for the one with cobblestone and this way you'll get uh, almost guarantee that you'll never have any spillover or wasted items so does that complete the biologist indeed it does gives us one more heart and our reward bag which is a greater reward bag containing a book with unbreaking three that's going to be all the time that we have for today. Tomorrow, one final quest. However, before I finish off that one final quest, I would like to do an episode where I show you guys Miraculture Jewelry and everything that it can do for you. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a thumbs up and a comment telling me what you liked about it. If you have not, please leave a thumbs down and tell me what I can do better. And I will see you next time.